So common mistakes that we see with our students here at Western Welding County is the heat control or your amperage ranges of your TIG puddle. So with your TIG weld, one way we can judge or multiple ways we can judge if things are getting too hot, one being is lots of undercut or washy tow lines, which is a big sign of overheating, whether you have too much amperage or just the material in general, can't take the heat anymore from that welder going pound for pound on weld after weld, and the base material kind of just gives up. Not just on the cap side that we see that, we can also see it on the root, but even on the cap also, instead of it being this being carbon, we actually can see kind of a dull crustiness on the surface, which is another sign of a large amount of oxidation that is starting to form. But flipping back to our root side on this one we could see a lot of that heavy crusting coming through which instantly is a sign of lots of oxidation and heat forming now if this welder got it any hotter actually they could have actually started to re-manipulate that root even after it was put in just due to the amount of heat pushing through to the root side and it actually starts to flex again which could eventually blow it out potentially so there is a way to tell if you have the proper amperage for your TIG puddle. One of the ways we can tell is, or if it's going wrong really is, is if the puddle one is outrunning you. So basically, instead of the tip of the puddle staying right on the leading edge with your tungsten, it's actually growing out ahead of you, which is kind of a runaway puddle, if you will. But also watching your toe line of your puddle. If you see those kind of washing out too much to where you're not getting that nice dome roll, is another sign that your TIG puddle is actually too hot for you. So a way you can tell too, if a puddle is too hot for you or just the base metal in general is getting too hot, the puddle actually becomes slippery with the cup. So what I mean by that is, is that as you're walking that torch, your tungsten is cutting the grooves in the puddle. And if the puddle cannot solidify quick enough to form those grooves, the cup technically never has any traction. So all that means is you're on an ice skating rink. So another way we can tell if our TIG weld is too hot is actually by the crown of the weld. Because if it's too hot, the puddle, as I said before, will push out ahead of you and basically pancake the puddle. Whereas if you have the proper amperage to travel speed for that welder, it will actually begin to form a nice crown. So another way that the welder can visually tell if it's too hot with TIG is by monitoring the heat affected zone. Because the heat affected zone is the discoloration around the weld after you clean your base metal. Now you always do want to have your heat affected zone as close to the weld zone as possible within one inch. But if we start seeing that discoloration spread further than that, that's another sign things are getting too hot and can cause distortion. So now that we have a weld that was too high of amperage, which next to it, one being that is actually much more lower amperage compared to that first one and more in tune with my travel speed, now we can actually see the heat affected zone difference and the beads pattern difference. So the very first one had a much larger heat affected zone, well past it, what it should have been. Plus two, my tow lines on it were much more washed out is what we call it, where they over wetted just due to the heat and from the puddle pushing ahead of me. Now the one that I just laid has a much tighter heat affected zone to the puddle, which means I was actually moving at a reasonably good travel speed, good amperage and everything, and I was in more control of the puddle. But also too, my tow lines are much more crisp, if you will. They're tight. You can tell that every step I took with my TIG torch, the puddle followed me exactly and I was in full in control of it. So your well being too hot can be bad, but also being cold can be just as bad, which can lead us to lack of fusion. So let's take Take a look at a weld that is too cold. So the way that I tell if my bead is too cold is actually the characteristics of it, just as if it was too hot, just right. So with too cold of a puddle, one of the things being one, it can excessively crown on you, but it definitely will wear you down. And what I mean by that is, it's a lot more effort to get that puddle to move if you have too low of amperage. Basically what that means is the puddle doesn't want to flare out due to having not proper amperage. So that means now I have to work the leading edge of the puddle to try and generate enough 
enough heat to melt my rod, get it to flow into my bevel edges, base metal, previous weld metal, whatever it may be. So visually looking at this one, one, my step pattern is significantly tighter. Because just like I said, I had to stay more on the leading edge of the puddle instead of allowing it to actually flow. But also too, my toe lines compared to the one that's overheated just right, this one, my toe lines are actually more crowning inward, which means I didn't have enough heat to actually get it to flow out into the base metal itself. If you cannot increase your travel speed to go with that puddle, whether it's too hot or too cold comfortably, then you need to adjust your amperage roughly 10 to 15 amps to accommodate the speed that you are moving at. But if you do wanna learn the proper way to TIG weld, come to Western Welding Academy and I'll show you the way.